Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the East Riding of Yorkshire series. Together with the unparished city of Hull, it forms the county of the same name. There's 172 parishes here. Which one are we in today? Okay, today in the East Riding, I've got a parish for you that's split into two discernible settlements, which have always been inextricably linked. In the main one, there's a church. Get a load of this church, guys. It's got a spire that's 200 feet high. It's so high, I can't fit it all in one shot without having to stand a long way back from it. Look at that, that's amazing. We'll get a closer look at that later, and it's open as well today, which means we can go in and have a look and see what's in there. There is something rather interesting. You'll find that church in the parish of Dalton Home. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Dalton Home is a civil parish in the East Riding of Yorkshire, situated five miles to the northwest of the market town of Beverley. We begin this one in the village of South Dalton. Our route begins on the main street through the village. This is a linear settlement with a few oddments on either side of it. The first thing to look at here is the old post office. I was loving this old post office sign on the wall by the way. I don't know if this is a listed building, but if it's not I hope this never gets taken down or altered in any way. Dalton Home is made up of two settlements, as well as South Dalton, there's also the much smaller Home on the Wolds, which over the years has become joined to South Dalton. Both the villages are run by the Dalton Estate, owned by the Hotham family, and they're occupied by estate workers and paying tenants. There's also Dalton Hall, which we'll get to later. That's the home of Lord Hotham, whose family have owned land in the area for generations. The hall was designated a Grade 2 listed building in 1952. So in this uh, little run of 10 that I've got going here in the East Riding at the moment, this is definitely the hardest one to walk around. There are no little helpful footpaths really. It's a very much a linear village with bits going off either way. So uh, yeah, this one's gonna be tough on the legs. South Dalton has a northern counterpart. North Dalton is approximately four and a half miles to the northwest, with the villages of Middleton on the Wolds and Lund in between. According to a dictionary of British place names, the village name derives from the Old English for a farmstead or village in a valley. South Dalton is listed in the Doomsday Book as Delton. At the time of the survey, the settlement was in the hundred of Snecklecross in the East Riding of Yorkshire. It contained 12 households, 12 villages, and 6 ploughlands. Now we're going up West End, which is indeed the western end of the village. It's also, to the untrained eye, a dead end, but you'll see why it isn't when we get to the village pub. First though, we must pass Dalton Home Village Hall. This was built in 1896 and refurbished in 2008. It's a lovely little building, and it serves as the village's community hub. This hosts an Ofsted registered playgroup running on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 9am until 2pm for 2-5 to five year olds during term time. We continue down West End after leaving a card on the rather barren, it has to be said, parish notice board. 
I'm sure there's lots going on in the village though. Here's some more history whilst we head for the village pub. In 1823, South Dalton was a village and civil parish in its own right within the Wapentake of Hartill. Occupations here included 12 farmers, a shopkeeper, a boot and shoemaker, a carpenter, a wheelwright, a blacksmith, and the landlord of the board public house. A weaver was also the parish clerk. There were three carriers operating between the village and Beverly once a week. As we continue down West End, we come to the Dalton Estate Office. That's behind this White House you can see in shot right now. Now we're at the one and only pub, and that's the Pipe and Glass Inn, situated near the entrance gates to the road through Dalton Park, which leads to Dalton Hall, about a kilometre to the west of the village. The Pipe and Glass is a former coaching inn and offers nine luxury boutique rooms across its two sites, the garden rooms and at the old lambing yard. Okay, so as I was walking up towards the Pipe and Glass, I noticed this road's got a gate on it. And I thought, oh no, because that's going to scupper my plans, because later, I want to talk a bit about Dal Dalton Hall and the Dalton Estate. Now, it, it'll involve driving down this road, and I thought it was going to be a private road, but as you can see, it's not. It's just a case of keeping to the road. It's private land otherwise, and as long as I shut the gate, I'm all right. So a little bit later, we'll be going through this gate and driving down this road. It's called Park Road. It will take us through Dalton Park and past Dalton Hall. And of course, I have to keep to the road, so I won't be getting out and doing any filming. The camera will be on the dashboard. A trip through those gates is coming later. For now, though, it's a walk back down West End, and we're off towards the north of the village next. These Tudor-style almshouses along South Dalton's main street were built by the third Lord Hotham in 1873 and comprise a group of cottages and a stone chapel. St Mary's Church can be seen beyond them. Directly opposite is a gate lodge and one of the entrances to Dalton Hall. We can't walk down this as it's a private road. We will, however, cross this later in the car. The spire of St Mary's, the 19th century church, is over 200 feet high and can be seen for miles around. I can confirm that too. In a future episode, I can see this from the banks of the River Hull. It was built to the design of John Loughborough Pearson in 1858 to replace an older parish church. The organ is a three manual instrument by William Hill dating from 1877. This has to be one of the most impressive buildings I've ever had the pleasure of visiting. And what's more, the exterior is only half of the story. Let's go inside. Inside the church are a number of monuments to the Hotham family. The older monuments were transferred from the earlier church. One, in black and white marble, is in memory of John Hotham. It dates from after 1697 and is said to have come from Italy. Sir John is represented in life as a reclining knight in full armour, with his helmet and gauntlet beside him, and in death as a skeleton. Here's the thing though, I searched all the way through the church and couldn't find the monument in question. Does anyone know if it's been moved? The churchyard has a simple war memorial commemorating the six residents of Dalton Home who were killed or missing in the First World War and the two lost in the Second World War. In terms of notable people, the Communist Member of Parliament Cecil Lestrange Malone was born here on the 7th of September 1890. If you need to get here by public transport, you can. You need the 142 bus from Beverly, which stops right here in the centre of the village. Okay, so next up we're going down Mia Lane, and as the name suggests, yes, there is a Mia here, just like there is in Bishop Burton, Cherry Burton, Walkington. This one's not as big though. Here's the Mia. This is much smaller than the other local ones, but it's still a nice part of the village. There were some ducks around too, enjoying South Dalton's largest water feature. Just before we leave Mere Lane behind, there's just time to catch the old lambing yard. Owned by the Pipe and Glass, this forms part of the accommodation they offer. And it's back to Main Street and off back to the old post office where we began. As estate villages go, this one's quite delightful. They can sometimes feel a little unwelcoming, but that's not the case here. Okay, just before we go and find that gate again and drive onto Dalton Park, I'm going to give you today's picture bit, and that's coming right about now. <laughs>
So here we go then, across Dalton Park. You are permitted to drive across the park using Park Road, as long as you close the gates at either end. I had to stick to the road, so as far as Dalton Hall goes, you'll need to keep your eyes on the left of the screen. Dalton Hall is constructed of grey brick with stone dressing and a slate roof. The main block is built in three storeys with a five bay frontage and single storey flanking wings linking to one and two storey pavilions. The Hotham family acquired the former manor house that stood east of the present hall in the late 17th century. John Hotham had been created first Baronet Hotham of Scorborough in 1622 and was High Sheriff of Yorkshire for 1634. The present hall was built between 1771 and 1775 by Thomas Atkinson of York for Sir Charles Hotham Thompson, 8th Baronet, and in 1797 Sir William Hotham, 11th Baronet, was elevated to the Irish Peerage as 1st Baron Hotham. Beaumont Hotham, 3rd Baron Hotham, was a general in the British Army who fought at Salamanca, Vittoria and Waterloo. He was MP for Lempster from 1820 to 1841 and for the East Riding of Yorkshire from 1841 to 1868. The building was then remodelled in 1872 to 1877 by Payne and Talbot of Birmingham for the 5th Baron Hotham involving the addition of balustrades and the replacement of Atkinson's east entrance porch with a colonnade. In 1954-45, further extensive remodelling of the hall took place during the tenure of the 8th Baron. The house is still occupied by the Hotham family. Here we are at the gate at the other end, which I recorded myself driving through. After a right turn onto the road towards Middleton on the Wolds, we're heading for home on the Wolds, and I opted to keep the camera on the dash to show you this rather longish way round into the second of Dalton Homes villages. Like South Dalton, Home on the Wolds forms part of and is run by the Dalton Estate as well. Home on the Wolds was listed as Hugon in the Doomsday Book. The name is believed to derive from the Old Norse word Hauga, meaning hills or mount. So I've opted to finish this one off in the bus shelter here in Home on the Wolds. And by the way, you can catch the 142 out here as well because it runs not only to South Dalton, but it also runs to Home on the Wolds as well. Dalton Home is served wherever you are by the 142 bus. And it's time for me to move on to my next one, which is uh, not too far away. And thankfully this morning, now the linear villages are out of the way. All the others today are circular and I like those a lot more. Let's move on to the next one. This has been the parish of Dalton Home and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I am out. Mm -hmm.